What's up, guys? Thanks for watching another Jags podcast. This is a special video cast episode where we're going to be breaking down some of the film on two of the Jaguars' biggest free agent signings and Tyler Eifert and Joe Schobert. Um, I think those two guys are going to be very influential this year, and I got some tape to prove it. Uh, before we get into it, Make sure that you follow our Twitter. We're at Another Jags Pod. Instagram, we're at Another Jags Pod. We have a YouTube channel. Obviously, it's where you're watching this video cast, um, where we put up our podcasts and our video casts. So make sure to go on there, give us a subscribe and all that. You can follow my personal Twitter at jtrent904. Um, I'll take all the hate and anything that comes with it. I got pretty thick skin, so anything that you, any any uh, constructive criticism or just criticism, uh, bring it my way. It's cool. Any any kind of wrong terminology I use, I typically get called out on, which is again 100% fine with me. I'm cool with it. You can hit me up in the comments or you can tweet me. It doesn't matter. Um, we're a fan show. Usually we bring the fans in because this is a video cast. We're just going to kind of be breaking down some film, but nonetheless, we love hearing from you guys. So, um, make sure to connect with me on all those ways. Um, I don't want to discount the other free agent signings the Jaguars made. Um, Rashawn Melvin uh, on a one-year deal, Al Woods, Cassius Marsh, um, Rodney Gunter, re-signing Lorente McRae. I'm a big Lorente McRae fan, and I think he's going to turn out to be a pretty decent player um, for us in the long term. I mean, not just special teams, but in, in all areas. Uh, I was a little disappointed to see the Dark West Denard contract fall through. Um, I thought he could have been a decent guy to come in as the second or third or fourth DB. I mean, it's always good to have depth with people that know what they're doing. And you can't just have an entire young core. Um, we've done it before, and it's it's it doesn't really com- keep up with the rest of the league. But it seems like that's the um, route we're going to take there at defensive back. But we'll see. A lot of draft picks. Never know what could happen. Um, but let's jump right into it. Um, I wanted to start with Tyler Eifert because – Tyler Eifert, although he does have um, this injury history that everyone kind of always seems to talk about with him, um, I don't think that it's his biggest concern as people are making it. I mean, he's a, yeah, he's only played in 43% of games he's been eligible for. Um, he's only played in 42 career games in six years. But he has shown that he can be um, healthy, which uh, he was this year. He played in all 16 games last year with Cincinnati. Strangely enough, Cincinnati's worst year as a franchise and um still though showing that he can stay healthy and look nobody wants to be healthy more than tyler eifert um so it's not that he's not trying obviously it's that he you know has had some issues in the past i think those are behind him though what excites me about tyler eifert is not his like uh raw skill that he has right now Uh, i think he's a very skilled player very good player um but what excites me more about eifert is i think what he brings to gardner Minshew. I think Minshew's the quarterback going forward. Let's go ahead and get that out of the way now. Um, I don't think Cam Newton or Jameis Winston gets brought in. I think this is Minshew's year to prove it. And I think Eifert could be perfect um, for him in that situation. And we got, I got some film here to to kind of prove it. Um, Tyler Eifert is 6'6", right? Big dude. 250, perfect size for a tight end. He's going to be 30 this year um, when the season starts. And um, last year he had 43 receptions for 436 yards and three touchdowns. That would give him more yards than I think all of our tight ends combined I think I saw so that's an immediate upgrade um, with the team and then not even to consider that Andy Dalton versus Gardner Minshew I think Gardner Minshew is a much much better quarterback Um, so we'll see I I think he'll help out and I think tight ends a a big deal because so often the Jaguars team has kind of overlooked the tight end position like not bringing in enough depth or not bringing in enough talent in which I'm a big fan of the tight end position because If you think about it, it's kind of the neutralizer to the speed rusher, right? So whichever side your tight end is on gets declared the strong side. So we're looking at the at the film here, right? So there's a tight end here in the slot, and he is going to be the strong side of the offense. That means the defense is going to put their speed rusher on the back side. Most of the time, NFL teams speed rusher is like one of the best players on their team. Think Yannick Ngakwe or Josh Allen for the Jaguars, right? So I think it's a very, very important position because it kind of gives you that balance to neutralize it. And I'm I'm really surprised the Jaguars have spent so many years not addressing it the proper way, almost since Mercedes Lewis. I know they tried with Safarian Jenkins, and I know they tried with Julius Thomas, but uh, again, those guys just didn't work out. Hopefully Eifert will buck that trend and he will be the guy that works out. Let's take a look here at, at, at this film here. So uh, in, in this first one, we see um, Eifert is going to be lined up in the slot. Okay. 
one thing right off the bat against about Eifert, he he does have a reputation as a good run blocker, but he didn't do a lot of run blocking this year. Um, CJ Uzuma for the Bengals is actually a very very good run blocker. I mean, I think Uzuma played in like 640 snaps uh, compared to Eifert's 491. So the Bengals definitely had Uzuma as tight end one and Eifert as tight end two. But really what Eifert became this year was like um, a receiver. He was basically a an in, uh, slot receiver, a move tight end. Didn't play much in line, but that's okay. It's, again, that's what Minshew needs. Minshew needs people who can get open and catch the ball. Okay, so uh, we're going to see... We're going to see Eifert lined up here in the slot, and he's going to have a pretty favorable matchup. Uh, um, we'll, we'll play it here, and as you see, like they run that little uh, that little curl uh, uh, wheel route, right? A little combo. It's like a little pseudo little pseudo pick here. You know, doesn't actually pick him here. And then um, Eifert's going to make a great play on the ball. He's going to go up and get it, and it's going to be a, a great play. Look, this is what Minshew needs. Minshew loves throwing the fade route. He threw the fade route. So often to Chris Conley, to DJ Chark, to, I mean, even even the tight ends that we put out there. He loves throwing that fade route, and he's good at it. There are quarterbacks who are good at throwing the fade route, and Minshew is one of them. So I like this matchup here. I like how Eifert can go over the top. Um, this was against Terrell Bonds, who was a rookie, and he's only 5'8", and, you know, not the biggest DB, but look, you get those matchups in the NFL. So I think that Minshew and Eifert could really take advantage of that um, if they wanted to. So again, the fade route is is, good, is another good one. Um, one of Eifert's best moves, and again, it is, Eifert has become pretty much like a receiver, right? One of his best moves is his little shimmy, fake out, and up, okay? He does that over and over and over again. Again, it's, it turns into a fade route. It could be a back shoulder if you wanted it to. But here, we're going to see it again. Look, see, Eifert is lined up as the single receiver to the left. And the whole offense is tight, right? Everyone's tight uh, to the ball. Um, and he's going to do a little shimmy here. And uh, he's going to give Terrence Brooks the works, right? Perfectly thrown ball. Uh, a good play. Um, again, a throw I think Minshew wants to make. To the boundary, over the top, throw it to a guy. Look, if you combine him with DJ Chark, then now you have two guys on both sides of the field you can do that to. That just makes it so much more of a weapon. So his ability to go up and get the ball in that situation. I mean, Terrence Brooks is a good – this is the best defense in the league. The The Patriots are one of the best teams in the league on defense. They're secondary. They're known for their secondary. And Belichick, he talks about in his books all the time that um, he's going to give you the fade. He's going to give you the over the top, the out of the, the boundary because that's the hardest play to make. Um, and Minshew has shown he can make it, and Eifert has shown that he can make it. So I think that we're in for a good combination here. All right, this is the next play. Um, this is, Look, I like this play because – Minshew didn't have anybody last year that he could look to the middle of the field to. Look, James O'Shaughnessy was good. Didn't play a lot. Got injured. Um, Chark, outside threat. Uh, Conley Conley ran those slant routes a lot to the middle of the field, which was good. But that was really Minshew's only option in the middle of the field. Um, Fournette, out of the backfield, was his next option. And look how good it's going to be to have a guy like Tyler Eifert in the middle of the field here. So Tyler Eifert is a master in the middle of the field. I mean, that's where he's made his money. And in his second year in the league, he was a pro bowler and strictly out of his ability to play the middle of the field. If we look back here, we're not Eifert's not going to be in the screen here. He's going to be out a little bit further into the slot. Look, this is just a, a this is a casual three step drop. And he's going to rocket it in. Great throw to the middle of the field. Um, going to be a great play. So. Overall, eight-yard post, middle of the field. That's what Minshew needs to have the ability to throw and to be open. So combine that with Eifert, and um, I think Minshew is in for a good combo. Again, I'll say that over and over again because I really do think that they have something special um, here. Okay, here's another play in the middle of the field, again, against the Patriots. A One of the top defenses in the league last year. Um, they're coached up well in the secondary. They know what to do, and we're going to see uh, it here. Patrick Chung is going to do a weak little reroute, and Eifert is going to push right through that. Look, the, the positive part about being 6'6", 250, is that when you get a weak little reroute here, you'll see here with Patrick Chung, he's going to do a little, try to reroute him. Not going to work. That was a pretty weak attempt there. Eifert, middle of the field, easy catch, a couple yards after the catch. 
that's what you want to see. That's what Minshew needs. Again, he needs that middle of the field threat. And I think once he gets that, that'll only open up his ability to get outside of the pocket as well because he'll have a guy that he can rely on to sit the defense in their zone, to keep the defense honest, and for them not to just cheat over to DJ Chark like they did toward the end of the year. Great throw, a little, or a little bit behind him, but great catch, and um, he gets there. Okay, now here's where tight ends can be very, very deceptive and good, and I think good teams are deceptive. It's just the you know, art of war is deception, right? Here you're going to see uh, Tyler Eifert lined up here. Um, Eifert's going to fake block and then release, okay? And you have to be able to do this in the NFL nowadays because defenses are so fast and they're playing so fast that they're going to read the tight ends and they're going to make a decision at the snap on what their responsibility is. Bonus film here. Look who's right here in the middle of the field. Our new boy, Joe Schobert. So we get a little bonus two-for-one action here, okay? So Eifert... It's going to be, look, a little fake block here. It says, look, oh, I'm blocking. And then, look, he's going to leak out. A little dump out. Great one-arm catch. And then Schobert's going to push him out of bounds. Again, nothing too fancy. Nothing about that is overly complicated. Okay, yeah, the one-handed catch was actually pretty impressive. But, look, that's just stuff that you never see the Jaguars run. You never see them do those little leak outs. And, and if they do, they never seem to get a lot of yards on it, right? They never seem to get up the field. So it's going to be good to see, to have a tight end who can do uh, something like that on a leak out and that'll work. All right. The next thing that's going to help out Minshew is on play actions. Okay. All the best teams run their play action boots and they have the tight ends running flat for easy pitch, easy catch. You see it on with every single team and you never seem like the Jaguars have a tight end that can do it. What we're going to see here, a nice little PA boot going out to Eifert, picking up the yards, picking up the first down on first down. Look, that's what you want to see. That's what you want out of a tight end. He's going to start here on the end line. And, again, not much of a blocker this season. Um, so defenses probably should have keyed that. But when you come all the way across the field, it's hard to stay disciplined. And he's going to get flat, and he's going to pick up 10 yards. Again, Minch, nothing fancy, but that's going to help Minshew so much. Those are the plays that just separate the offenses that get first downs and the offenses that don't. Okay? Love this play. Love this play. Um, you have to look at the scenario here, right? The situation. Um, I don't know if you can see it here. It's kind of dark. I apologize. Um, it's fourth quarter. Three seconds left in the game. Uh, the Dolphins are down by eight. Okay. Um, basically, they're throwing a Hail Mary from the 27-yard line. And they pretty much have five wide receivers out there running verticals. It's going to be a uh, Hail Mary. All right. Um Dalton sits back in the pocket, buys a little bit of time with his feet, launches it up to nobody, and Tyler Eifert comes down with it. Again, that's what you want out of a tight end. You want someone that can go up. You're going to see he goes up over three defenders. I mean, when you're 6'6 and you can catch the ball the way Eifert does, you can do this type of thing. How many situations last year were we in desperation? Were we in comeback mode? Were we were in clutch time and Minshew had to step up, right? Well, now add another guy to that, and we have two guys on the field that have a history of being clutch and stepping up. Look at this. Perfect. Goes up, high points the ball, gets it over three defenders, wins, or ties the game. They go on to get the extra point or the two-point conversion, and they tie the game, and they take it to overtime. Again, Minshew's best friend. So now, think. when's the last time you can think in Jaguar history that we had a tight end who went, who can go on a PA boot, who can do a delayed leak, who can catch Hail Mary jump balls, who can catch fade routes on the sideline? It's a complete player. Um, and that's what we're missing out of a tight end position. And I, it's really been depressing how the Jags have decided to overlook the tight end position over the years because offenses have pretty much centered their offense around tight ends in a, in a lot of situations. So glad to see this. Um, he can do all those things. Combo package. Love to see it. Last play on Eifert. Um, I just wanted to put this on there because when I was, I was looking through the film, I was watching the games. I noticed that Eifert got a lot of one-on-one -on -one matches with former Jaguar defensive back. You may be able to tell by the mouth guard hanging out Jalen Ramsey. And I noticed throughout the game when I was watching, I was looking through the plays, the offense. And I was like, man, Ramsey's really, really playing off of Eifert. And I, I, it's probably because Ramsey's cocky and thinks he can break up on anything and that it doesn't matter or can't beat him over the top. I love his play, though. Love his play. Just a quick five-yard out. Quick five-yard Look, that, that's one of the best 
corners in the league. That's a premier corner, one-on-one, isolation, and he has the ability to run a five-yard out, make the catch. That's so clutch for a young quarterback. That is so clutch for someone like Minshew, who may not have the best offensive line this year, to be able to get the ball out quick and throw it. Yeah, that's a, it seems like an easy pitch and catch, but it, it really, really isn't. Um, to do that in the NFL, from throw to throw from one hash to the next, I mean, that's that's pretty impressive. And Minshew needs that, and he can – Again, that's on one of the best corners in the league. So if you can do that against Jalen Ramsey, uh, I think when we line up against the Titans or the Colts or the Texans, uh, we'll be able to complete those passes um, pretty easily. So Eifert's the real deal. If he can stay healthy, we'll see what happens. I'm really hoping that he does, and um, I'm looking forward to what he has to offer to this team and a team-friendly deal. Uh, We're going to take a little break, and then we're going to talk about Joe Schobert. We'll look at some of his film and, and why I think he will fit in well nicely I hope that's a sentence with the Jaguars defense and the things that they want to do going forward so sit tight and we will be right back all right and welcome back to another Jags podcast this is a special video cast where we're breaking down Eifert and Schobert two of the Jaguars newest signings Um, if you haven't yet followed us on Twitter we're at another Jags pod same with Instagram, same with YouTube. Um, subscribe to all those things so that we can get more notifications out there and so that we can get feedback from you guys. We are fan interactive, and I think we're going to be recording a podcast tomorrow uh, with Mike. So we'll, we'll put out a, a Twitter poll or two to kind of get gauge uh, how y'all are feeling about some of these signings. But I wanted to move on to Joe Schobert because Joe Schobert did get the bigger deal out of Eifert and Schobert. I mean, Schobert got... A fat deal, fifty million dollars. I mean, I want to say that you know what was it, twenty five of it is guaranteed. Um, so essentially, I think it's a two year deal with with twenty five guaranteed. Um, but I think Schobert is a guy that actually will be with the team long term. I can't say I think Eifert will be. Um, I do think that Minshew and him will have a connection, but. Look, that's that deal is structured really for them to be able to dump Eifert next year if they wanted to. I hope they don't, but um, Schobert is a guy that I think they want to be part of this core uh, nucleus for the rebuild, which I think they're doing. Um, and I'm okay with that. Schobert is a young dude, 26, uh, very, very consistent. Been in the league for four years. Um, his rookie year, he didn't really get a lot of snaps. I mean, he was undrafted. I mean, he was not a big prospect coming out of college. Um and besides his rookie year, he's been very, very good and very, very consistent. Um, like I said, very young. He doesn't make a lot of mental errors. And um, he played in 99% of the defensive snaps. I mean, uh, 1,059. That's like Miles Jack numbers back to 2017. Uh, that's um, a very, very outstanding amount of snaps to play. Um, he does a lot of things good. Um, he, he can disguise what he's doing pre-snap because he has such a concept of what is going on around him. We'll see uh, Cleveland would line him up like on the defensive line on a lot of snaps because he had the ability to drop, which a lot of linebackers don't. Um, very, very smart guy. He actually has very good ball skills. Um, not something that you look at and think that naturally he would have a lot of ball skills, but when you watch his film, he does. Um, and that's 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 good and that's what we want um so let's jump right into the film this first one we're going to start off with a, a nice little interception he had um this is against the the dolphins and and they're going to be uh just in your basic drop and the ball is going to bounce off of Durham smith's hands and he's going to catch it in the air so um, i want to look at this from the end zone though because this is a weird like i didn't see this formation a lot oh man i don't have y'all on the full screen there we go. I'm just clicking through everything. All right, so we don't see this formation a lot in the Cleveland Browns defense. Um, they typically are in an over front, uh, basically just meaning that the nose tackle is on the center's outside shoulder on the weak side. Not important, but basically they're usually they're in a over front. But what they could do from time to time is they could line out in this, like I, I call it a wide nine, um, you could you could call it whatever from system to system, from coach to coach. Basically, you have two wide defensive ends at the end, and then your tackles are both lined up outside of the guard. And what this is doing, and this is actually creating a pretty large gap in the middle of the field. If you think about it, there's usually a defensive lineman you know, between the inside shoulders of the guards. Um, that's a big running lane here. 
Now, this could have been an obvious passing down. Um, however, Schobert is responsible for that gap, and Cleveland is comfortable with that, which shows his versatility. So he is actually going to drop um, at the at the snap into his pass coverage, which he does pretty well, and we'll see other indications of that as we go on. Um, Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to change the play, which – um, turns out was probably a bad idea in hindsight. Uh, when he went back and watched the film, he probably should have stuck with the original play because it was probably a run play in the middle. Um, but Schobert probably scared him. Schobert's going to kind of read the defense. It's going to be a pop-up ball. That's a Pop Warner interception right there. You love to see it, but it does take ball skills, right? It doesn't happen. Um, look, a lot of people would call that play lucky, but what I've noticed in my experience of watching film and evaluating football players is if players keep getting lucky – then it's no longer luck and their skill. Like you could look at that play and say it bounced off his hands and he made a play in the air. He's lucky. Well, not really. Not really. I think that's skill because it makes it takes skill to make that play, to make the right drop, to find the ball in the air and to catch it and to and to, and to run for it. So you know, I'll give him that one here. Okay, here's an here's another um, interception. Um, this is gonna be our boy Mason Rudolph, and uh, he didn't hold his starting job too long. But uh, let's see here if we can find – oh, let's watch this pick again real quick. Look at that. In the air. Nice nice tackle there, uh, Smith. Okay. Schobert's going to drop here, dropping deep, dropping deep, and he's going to play underneath. And there – look, that's a pretty deep drop for a middle linebacker. If, you don't typically see the middle linebackers playing 15 yards down the field very often, but Schobert has the ability. Look at – end zone film is always better. Schobert's here. Schobert is lined up. He's, he's going to be reading – his eyes the entire snap um he's basically gonna do his basic drop but look here's where i like it here because watch how he opens up his hips okay he has his hips opened up to tevin jones right here okay and this is where you want a linebacker to be but this is also if you're oh you can't see it because the film here thing okay move this up here look at this okay he has his hips turned here he's going to cut inside and he's going to try to flip the hips of Joe Schobert. Schobert's going to make a great little play here and move on the ball. Look, ha that that's good hips right there. We, um, in your coaching defensive backs, you talk about opening up your hips. Uh, you talk about backpedaling. Uh, he did a, he did a half turn there and then opened up. The, I mean, that's, that's perfect. Um, you don't see that type of athleticism and the ability to stay low and to open up his hips um, in linebackers, especially middle linebackers, um, very often. All right, we move on to the next play. This is, again, our boy Ryan Fitzpatrick. Uh, man, Ryan Fitzpatrick's kryptonite is Joe Schobert, man. He, if, if Fitzpatrick signs the team in the AFC South, I will be very, very excited. Um, but basically he's going to get outside the pocket. He's going to throw the ball and it's going to be a terrible throw. But again, opportunistic, which is one word I would use to describe Schobert is he's there and he gets the ball. Um, when we walk, look at it from the end zone film again, Schobert's going to make a deep drop. Um, they're in their classic over front. Like there always are. And, um, they got the tight end to this side. They got the tackle to this side. Fitzpatrick's going to pretty much try to buy some time with his feet. He's going to get outside the pocket. Um, he actually has a receiver open, but when you try to throw the ball, like he's about to do that on the run across your body, that's going to happen. And they're going to throw the ball, and Schobert's going to intercept it, and he's going to run it back. And um, Julian Davenport gets a nice little uh, tackle here. Probably his first tackle of his career. Um, but, you know. Good for Schobert. Look again, those ball skills are great. And we're gonna if we're lining up Schobert at Mike linebacker, then uh, it's gonna be good that we that we do that. All right, here's an, here's another one. And I'll try to move quickly through these for you guys. Uh, they're playing the Bills. Um, the Bills are lined up heavy, heavy, heavy to the left, right? Um, tackle over two tight ends, and they're gonna run a counter to the field. I'm never a fan of running counters to the field. I feel like it's kind of counterproductive because a lot of teams will still line up their strong side backers to the field in situations like this. Um, and they're going to counter to the field. And then you're going to see Schobert. Um, a thing that a linebacker has to do is he has to be able to scrape, right? And what that means is he has to be able to move laterally along the line of scrimmage without getting blocked and finding the ball carrier. Very, very difficult to do when everyone around you is 6'8", 6'7", 6'6". These linemen are huge. And you're trying to find a little running back. Very, very difficult. So we're going to see the Bills run a little ca terrible counter here. I mean, I mean that's, that's just horrible. I mean, that's just absolutely horrible. Watch Josh Allen's fake here. Is this is this fake faking anybody? I mean, this is horrible. Um, he's going to run a little fake little counter here. Schobert's going to scrape and get there. So I don't know if you saw that, but we'll key in on Schobert here. Schobert's here. 
His ability to scrape all the way across the line of scrimmage. He's going to defeat a block from, I think that is Lee Smith. Lee Smith, yeah. He's going to defeat a block from Lee Smith. Um, I think he's the extra tackle. Uh, tight end. T- tight end, but he's, like, he's the size of a tackle for sure. Um, and he's going to make the play. Again, very basic stuff, but it's what you want to see out of a linebacker for sure. All right. Um, next play. This is going to be another example of a, um, a scrape here. Okay. And I think if we watch this from the end zone, it's actually a little bit better of a view. So let's let the film get there. And here we are. Okay. So Joe Schobert, look, he's going to be lined up here. Um, he's got a little small, little hybrid linebacker here who could be similar to like miles Jack or someone like that. I think that's Mac Wilson. Um, and he's going to, He's going to be responsible for probably this gap. It's hard to know what their stunt assignment is from this D lineman. Um, this four eye technique right here is he's going to stunt inside. So look, this seems like an easy thing to do, but when you are scraping across the line of scrimmage, this is a lot of traffic here. And he's going to get right to his gap. He's going to get flat. He's going to make the tackle. It's, it, like, that's something that we need the Mike linebacker to do. And they haven't been able to do for some time. Um, and, it's good to see because I think that, like, again, I think Sherwood will be part of the nucleus um, that will be here for a while. All right, next play. We're going to look at the Jets and Le'Veon Bell. And this is a good, this is a good play here, too, and I'll, and I'll tell you why. Something that we've always missed because a lot of times you've seen the Jaguars linebackers. They're so athletic. They've prided themselves on being athletic and flying around to the football. And one of the things that comes with that is what's called over-pursuit. And that's where they lose inside leverage and they let the running back cut it back inside. It happened so much in this year uh, with the Jags defense. But Schobert doesn't let that happen. He plays with very, very good leverage. All right, so if we look at the defense here, again, looks like their base over front again. Um, the Browns pretty much stay in that over front. I think this is a Luke. We have a Luke Falk sighting here. Um, and Luke Falk is going to hand it off to Le'Veon Bell. Schobert is going to meet him in the gap where he's supposed to be. Okay. Schobert's doing a great job. He's free, um, free for a tackle. Le'Veon's going to try to bounce it outside and Schobert's there. Look, getting to that gap, squeezing down the line. I mean, that's stuff that premier linebackers can do. And, um, Schobert shows us there that he can do it. All right, moving on to the next play. I think we're sticking with the with the oh no, we're moving on to I think this play goes to Philip Lindsay. Okay, yes. So this is going to be a uh, I'm sorry, not Philip Lindsay. I believe this is Deontay Spencer. Um, this is another example of Schobert being able to play inside out. Um, if we watch what happens here, the Broncos are going to throw a quick screen to Deontay. I want to say Spencer, Deontay Spencer, and. Um, Schobert's going to get there, and he's going to make a play for the ball. Look, again, you got to remember, Deontay Spencer is like 170 pounds, right? Not that big of a guy. Schobert is going to line up here right outside of the tackle. He's going to shoot in at the screen right away. But then look look here. See, this little spot, this little gap right here, um, a 6'1 middle linebacker uh, who weighs two, almost 250 pounds and then a 5'8", 170-pound wide receiver in open space is what you want as an offense. That's the matchup you want as an offense. So Denver's licking their chops right here because this is literally what they want. And Schobert is going to keep inside leverage. He's not going to over pursue. He's going to keep inside leverage. He's going to make a play and he's going to wrap up and force a fumble on Deontay Spencer. Again, that's all you can ask for out of a linebacker. If you can do that play in and play out, then that's solid. And that's what the Jags need, especially going forward. All right, this is the last play. Um, this is Le'Veon Bell again. And again, anytime you can tackle Le'Veon Bell, that's pretty impressive. And they're going to throw just a quick out to the flat that Le'Veon Bell is going to get up the sideline. And I have this play in here not because it's even great, um, the technique-wise. Like, he didn't bring his hands with the tackle. Um but again, who am I to tell this guy how to tackle? I mean, <laughs> I've never played it down in the NFL, and uh, I can't imagine tackling Le'Veon Bell would be incredibly difficult. But um, if you if you watch here, um, again, I think this is like another Luke Falk sighting here. He's going to dump it off to Le'Veon in the flat. There's going to be a missed tackle. Schobert's not going to give up, and he's going to do this little, like, uh, I guess a cut tackle, but he didn't bring his hands, and he's going to force a fumble there. Love to see it. Again, Another lucky play, and and again, if 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 enough lucky things happen, is it luck? Okay, at what point does it turn from luck to skill? And uh, that's the question that we all got to figure out. So, 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, hopefully, we'll have some more coming out. I mean, I got nothing but time, you know, working from home. So um, make sure to check out the the Twitter. Make sure to give us a like on YouTube. Give us your comments. I'm sure I messed up something somewhere. Let me know what you liked, what you didn't like, and things like that. And um, we look forward to. Hopefully you guys will check out our podcast because our podcasts are great. If you enjoyed this little insight and little in-depth analysis, um, then check out our podcasts. They're always entertaining. They're always good. You can find it. Just search it. Another Jags podcast. We're the first thing that comes up for sure. We appreciate you guys listening. We appreciate you guys watching, um, and we will see you guys later.